Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I'm going to show you how to make the perfect pecan pie. And for that I'm going to start with a great base and that is the crust. And I'm going to use my pat brise recipe. And for those of you who didn't watch the pastry basics video I will link to that in the description box. And please make sure to check that out because I give you so many tips and tricks on how to get the perfect pastry. And the pat brise is special because it achieves a really nice and flaky crust, which I definitely want in this pie. So I started with that. I have one that is ready to go here. It's been sitting in my fridge. It's nice and cold. So I'm just going to roll it out to about an eighth of an inch in terms of thickness. And I'm doing this with my parchment method. And Again, all of this is explained in a lot of detail in my pastry basics video. So you can roll this out in whichever way you like, um, but I'm just putting my dough in between two parchment sheets. Now, once you've rolled out the dough enough so that you can cover your pie dish and a little bit more, then you're good to go. I'm gonna transfer this on top of it and you should have a lot of dough hang from the sides. And that is because this is going to give us a nice surface for us to do our crimping. So that's the design along the edge of our pie. So for now, I'm just tucking it in very gently. You can see that there's a bit of structure to my dough here. It's nice and cold still. You want to work quickly with this so that it doesn't get too warm. Because the second that happens, then the dough starts to become really flexible and starts to sort of melt all over the pie dish. So I'm just doing it and turning the dish as I go so that I don't um, tear the dough too much. So once you have it all inside the dish, now is the time to trim off excess. And I do want some excess hanging off of the edge. I'm going to leave about one centimeter um, so like half an inch so that I get a nice design for the border of my pie. And I find that the easiest way to get rid of the excess crust or the excess dough is to use a pair of scissors because you can really get in there, twist and turn. And yeah, it's just much, much simpler this way. Now, once you're happy with your edge and you kind of want to make sure that it's even throughout the entire edge then you can start crimping into whatever shape you want i'm going to show you um, a design that i tend to do for most of my pies but if you know others there's tons of them and tons of great tutorials actually on how to get really cool shapes but for today i'm using my thumb on the inner part and my index finger and thumb on the outer part. So we're trying to press the inner thumb and make it go in between the outer thumb and index finger. And that gives you a really cool pattern. Now, if you're not comfortable doing this, then there's lots of other things you can do. You can use the leftover dough and start doing like cutouts and just gluing those around the edge. That's a really nice and quick way to get a nice border or do any sort of shape that you want. Um, we've handled the dough quite a bit, so this needs to rest again in the refrigerator. You can do mini pies with the leftover dough. It's best to have a little bit more than to be short on dough. So I'm going to put this in the refrigerator and start preheating my oven. So for the pecan pie, since it's a very fluid filling, I like to pre-bake my crust slightly. So for that, I'm going to use um, a little trick for blind baking. And again, this is explained in my pastry basics video. And there are many ways you can do this. I like using some parchment paper um, that I will put inside the pie dish. Just be very gentle not to rip the dough and then some pie weights on top of that that prevent the dough from developing air pockets. So 
it just keeps the dough nice and flat. Um, you can use all sorts of things there. I talk about rice in my video. I talk about docking the pie crust and all of these things. So for the blind baking, I'm just going to bake it for about 15 minutes with the weights and then another five without the weights. After that, we'll take out the crust and leave it to cool completely. And while that is happening, we're going to start with the filling. I have a lot of pecans here, about two and a half cups of that. And these are raw pecans, so they're not toasted or anything. You could do that if you really wanted to intensify the flavor, though. So we're going to save about half a cup of these pecan halves. And these are for the decoration, the last step. And the rest of the pecans, we're going to chop finely. And of course, you want to chop these evenly. You want every slice of that pecan pie to have the same amount of pecans in there. Once you're happy with your pecans, then we can move on to the next step in our filling. And that is to combine our sweeteners. I have three different kinds here. I have maple syrup, glucose and brown butter. Um, the maple syrup and the brown butter give it a really deep, rich flavor. The glucose is more for the texture of the filling. Um, you see lots of uh, golden syrup or corn syrup recipes out there. Those are great substitutes for um, glucose, but glucose is what I had. So that's what I'm using here. So you want to stir this thoroughly with the melted butter, which has cooled at this point. Add your flavorings. I have bourbon and vanilla extract here, which I generously free pour as usual. And you've noticed that there's quite a bit of sugar in here. So we want to cut through the sweetness and add some salt to this. And finally, you want your filling to have some sort of structure. So you don't want the whole thing to ooze out when you slice into it. So for us to prevent that from happening, we're going to add eggs. And I have three whole eggs going in one at a time. And once you're done incorporating those, then you are done. You can see it's a very fluid filling. So that's why we pre-baked our crust so that you don't get a soggy crust. Um, this is what it looks like once it's done pre-baking. You can see that the edge has got a little bit of color and the bottom should be nice and hard. So I start with the liquid filling first and then add my chopped pecans to that. And with the help of a spatula, I'm just making sure that all of those pecans are fully immersed in that liquid. Once I'm happy with that, I can use the half a cup that we reserved from those pecan halves and start laying them on top of the filling like so. So I'm building concentric circles as best as I can, starting from the outer one, building all the way towards the center. This is, by the way, a 20 centimeter pie dish. Um, just make sure that you have enough pecans if you are baking this in a bigger um, pie dish. So this can take about 45 to one hour in the oven at a 180 Celsius oven. Now, if you find that the crust is browning way too quickly, then just grab a piece of aluminum foil and wrap it around the crust. Um, you can check at minute 25 or minute 30 to see what's going on and act quickly. Now, the final tip that I can give you is to wait until the pie has cooled to cut it. Otherwise, you're looking at a very, very hot filling. And to get the perfect slice, I would even suggest putting it in the fridge for at least a couple of hours if you can wait that long. So there you have it, a beautiful pecan pie, a delicious recipe that I hope you love. And I thank you for watching. 
don't forget to hit the like button and to subscribe for more.